This is the Facet 1122 Desktop Calculator. This was released in 1966, and I believe the original price was between uh, $1,100 <clears throat> and $1,200. To put that in perspective, in today's money, that would be between $8,000 and $9,000 for nothing other than a generic four function calculator with memory. Uh, this is a OEM clone of the Sharp Compat 30. Uh, basically similar features but the key arrangement is a little bit different and I believe the capacity might be a little bit different too. But in general this is a all transistor design. I believe there are over 600 transistors and over 1200 diodes in this calculator. Uh, this is a very large calculator. Um, I'm going to show you some other calculators next to it for size comparison and then I'll do a little demonstration and show you what it looks like inside. So on the left I have a Monroe model CSA 10 uh, automatic mechanical calculator. This is the type of thing that the faucet would have replaced when you would purchase one. Um, on top of the calculator, on the little tray there, on top of the faucet, I have a just a little handheld full function calculator to give you the equivalent of what size you could expect for the same uh, facilities today. And on the right, I have a AT mid tower computer. So you can see that. Um, the facet is, you know, similar size class to the uh, AT computer case. I'll turn these around a little bit because when you look at the facet from the front, you can't see just how long it is. It's actually a little bit longer than the AT case. So I'll show you that in a minute. So as you can see from the side here, the facet is just about as long as the AT computer case, but you notice that the Monroe mechanical calculator is actually much smaller than the faucet which would replace it. So the question becomes, why would you want to replace your small Monroe calculator with a larger and probably more expensive electronic faucet or sharp weather equivalent electronic calculator? And the reason comes down to speed. In a minute, I'll give you a little demonstration of how fast you can do things like division on the Monroe and how fast you can do it on the facet. And you'll see that there was quite a bit of difference that probably for most businesses made up the difference in cost. So I'll do a little demonstration of the facet first, and I'll do a little speed test of that compared to the Monroe. So. What does an $1,100 calculator do? Let's find out. When you turn it on, you'll notice that both the 7 and the 9 digit in the Nixie tubes is lit up, and that is the default on state of the machine. Uh, this is a binary coded decimal machine, which is to say that it uses four binary digits to represent each decimal digit, and in binary coded decimal, if all of the binary digits are set to 1, that's an invalid state, but apparently the decoder logic which drives the Nixie tubes in this calculator decodes that as both the 7 and the 9 being lit. So once you turn it on, you can get with this, you have to clear it. Notice that we now have all zeros. This does not clear out leading zeros. And then we can now, <clears throat> we are now ready to enter our number. You just type on the keyboard and you see it appears up there. To add the number into the calculator, we press the white equals key here. We can then enter some more numbers. To do a subtraction, we type in our numbers. So we want to subtract 34. Type in 34 and press the minus key. And we'll see that subtracts 34 from the result in the calculator. This calculator also has a memory which also does not clear when you turn it on. This CLM key here clears the memory. So we can then add this result to the memory by pressing M plus. It's kind of hard to see, but you notice that this key here is now lit up. 
that indicates that the memory has contents in it. So we can clear this, go on to do some more calculations. And if we want, we can say MC, and we'll bring back what we have in the memory. Didn't add it in. Let's try again. We do some math here. You should be able to call back the memory. Uh, well, let me add it in. But it does have a memory function. You can store things in the memory if you need to. This machine also does uh, multiplication and division. So we can type in some numbers here. We press the multiply key. It's kind of hard to see again, but you notice that the red thing lights up there. Let me turn off the lights. So now it's a bit easier to see. You can see the red circle lighting up in the multiplication key, as well as the memory indicator lighted up because we have still have something in the memory. If I press CLM, you notice that goes out because now there's nothing in the memory. Then we type in our next number, press equals, and it carries out the multiplication. You'll notice that it doesn't uh, blank out the display while working, so all the digits over here, uh, you can see the numbers flying there. I'll do this again so you can see. Let's do a big one. You can see all the digits working as it does the calculation. You notice that it takes a bit of time compared to modern electronics to carry out the calculation. You can see the same thing for division. And now, for decimal points. If you want to use decimal points, you have to set how many decimal points you want here. So for example, if we want to do uh, two digit, two decimal, two places behind the decimal point, we press this down, and everything we do will get two digits behind the decimal point. If we want more, we can set more. And we can get six digits behind the decimal point. So now that I've given a little bit of a demonstration of this, the one thing I forgot to mention, this CLE key here just clears the entry. So if we're doing a, some math, and we make a mistake, we can just hit CLE, type in again, and we are, should be left with our result. Uh, MC recalls, there's nothing there. MC recalls the memory, and RC recalls what was just typed in. See, I typed in that before, I press RC, and it switches between the result and the last entered digit. So if you want to enter something multiple times, you can do it that way. This key here, R, is used for rounding. If you were doing a division or something, that would result in more decimal points than your current mode is set for. The R key will round up or down based on the last digit. So this latches in. And if that's latched in, it will round up or down based on the last digit. If it's not latched in, it will not round. It will simply truncate the result. So now that you've seen a bit how this works, I'm going to give you a little speed test between this and what it was replacing the type of calculator, the mechanical electronic calculator, or electrical calculator rather, the Monroe. So, if we want to do a division on the facet calculator, we already know how to do that. We just type in the number, press divide, enter the second number, press equals, and we get our result. To do the same thing on the Monroe is a little bit more difficult. We first have to enter our number on the left side of the keyboard. This should be in the home position. So this should be the normal position for doing calculating. You would have your results accumulate in here in this register. But we enter our first number on this side of the keyboard. 
press the div tab key and then our number is entered up here then we enter the second number and press the div key and our result appears up here as you can see they both get the same result but this one is definitely much faster and much quieter than this one. So that would be the basically the only advantage of buying one of these is the speed and quietness and also the memory. Although they did make models of this I believe that did have an internal memory. This particular model is from the late 40s or early 50s. By the 1960s when this came out they did have models that had um, internal mechanical memories. Um, so now I'm going to open the covers on the facet and you can take a look at all of the tiny little transistors inside. So I removed two screws on the back and then lifted the cover off. Um, technically there are supposed to be two screws in the bottom down here that you also have to remove but one of the previous owners of this calculator over its 50 year history has broken these tabs off so you no longer have to remove these screws down here these pieces are no longer attached to the plastic cover. This piece down here is cast aluminum, which uh, is something that's completely non-existent in modern electronics. And if you want to say the MacBook, uh, that's pretty sure that's milled and not cast. Let me turn it on. I'll turn this around so you can see all the parts inside. So as you can see, there's a row of circuit boards here. Let me pick this up. I can show you better. So as you can see, digits are up here. Take a look at those. And then each of these cards has two digits attached to it. It's kind of hard to see up there in the front. But each of these cards has two digits attached to it. And if you look down inside there, you can see that these cards are pretty well packed with components. You have some, that right there is a diode. You have some resistors. The transistors are pretty small. Let's see if I can find some here. Here, these silver cans down here are some transistors, I believe. And on this back card here, these little circles right here are also transistors. I believe the, you can see some more of the cylinder ones up there. I believe the metal cylinder ones like that are the power transistors that are used for driving the Nixie tubes. Uh, these Nixie tubes, I believe, need about 180 volts to operate properly. So they have this special larger transistors for driving those. So each of these cards has the decoders and the flip-flops for two digits. Um, and these cards in the back here, these two large ones, are the sequencing and control logic. So these little tiny white ceramic transistors here, I can point to one, these little tiny white transistors here are the logic transistors well, the larger CAN transistors are the power transistors for driving the display. So I believe in total there are over 600 transistors and over 1,200 diodes in this calculator. These little um, cylinder things here, not the standing up ones, the laying down ones, like the green one there, uh, those are diodes, I believe. The things standing up here are resistors. So uh, I believe that's about all I have to say about this particular calculator. It was very expensive and very fancy in its day. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.